So welcome everyone today to Psalms Through the Eyes of the Living Letters, and today we're going to be going over Psalms chapter 50. Um, Father's been messing with me a lot about, about this psalm. Uh, as I began to, to meditate on it and began to, to look into um, what the Father is, was saying to me, you know, because first, really, that any time that we study, my heart is to study because I want to know the Lord right? And then in the, in, the, in the outcropping of that, and from that place, then he's given us a platform whereby we can speak. But the importance of, the, of what, what the word of the Lord is saying to me has to be to me first. First unto Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, and then to the other most, uttermost parts of the earth. So Jerusalem this place is 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 very very important and then i then once once i hear what the lord is saying to me then uh particularly since we're doing this class it's it's great because the father was the one that asked me to do these classes in the first place he said why don't you begin to do the psalms and do it in a in the the, the platform that we're currently doing it in and i said well lord okay yes i'll i'll, I'll do that i'll do that so it's been kind of a double thing in, in this case, because he set it up for me to do in, in both ways, both to, to hear it for myself, but then to, to, be able to, uh, to be able to talk about it. And I love that because part of the way of, of really understanding the word of the Lord, to me, not only comes by hearing his voice, it also comes um, from the place of, of how we engage with his voice in each other, right? And you guys know at the end of our class, every time we do a Psalms class, we always have a time of engagement. Uh, even though the, the, that part of the video is not seen, that part of the video is, uh, I mean, we don't record that part because it's a time for just us to really dig into the word of the Lord. And so those of you that are joining, I would, I would highly suggest uh, and those of you that are watching us on YouTube, highly suggest that you be a part of the actual live meeting because there is a lot more that goes on after this than just the meeting itself. And it is a great chance to be able to engage with one another. There are treasures that are hidden inside of each and every one of us that are, are, are necessary in order for every joint to be able to supply. You have a, you have a perspective in the word of the Lord. You see, it, it, it kind of fits with what we're going to be talking about today in Psalms chapter 50, because one of the ways that I've seen this idea behind this treasure has to do with the scripture in, I believe it's Isaiah, but I don't remember the actual chapter. I think it's like Isaiah 50 or 60-ish, somewhere in that area, where it opens up with this, and the, the scripture opens up and says, remember the 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 pit from which you were dug and the, the rock from which you were hewn, the rock from which you were, if you will, chipped off of. And it began a picture inside of me of, of, of how sometimes on a mountain that sometimes some of the rocks will get loose and, and they'll, they'll shake loose from the actual rock itself. And I asked the question, I know this, this, is, this seems kind of weird, but just, just hear me out. And, and I want you to think about it yourself. If a rock breaks loose from a part of the mountain, does that stop it from being a part of the mountain? Yes, it may be loose, but does that mean it's been taken away from that mountain? Okay, maybe to a certain extent, but it, the rock itself is of the mountain. You see what I'm saying? And you can never take the mountain out of that rock. Well, I love the scripture because it, it begins to talk about who we are as Mount Zion, you know, and that that we have come to Mount Zion, because in the place of Zion, in the place of the mountain of the Lord, that our mountain and His mountain join together, and and they become one mountain. So it's 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 almost as if each individual rock comes together to form the mountain itself. Now the Father is the mountain. Yes. Okay. I see what you're saying. I see what you said. I, I, I had to stop and think about it. Charisma wrote in there, not according to quantum entanglement. Well, if I'm understanding with what you're trying to say there, uh, Charisma, come on, come up and say something. 
I mean, I, I worded that wrong. I worded that wrong. Oh, okay. It, it should have been according to. It shouldn't. Have, they shouldn't have had the not on. Ah, on the gotcha. front. I don't know why that's there. Oh. Well, that it's was funny. A mistake. It's okay. It's funny because I understood you anyway, because I knew what you were saying was that with quantum entanglement, you are always quantumly entangled together, whether there's separation or not. And that's what you were trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I saw that and I, and, uh, and, and knew what you were speaking of. So in that place as the mountain moves, we move. Right. And, 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 I, and I just love that. I wanted to begin today with that picture as we begin to, to dig into Psalms chapter 50. Now, the reason I've been stirred so much today is that over the last, over the last couple of, of days, especially, there's been a growing irritation in my spirit. And I really can't figure out what that irritation is. Usually for me, anytime that I, I begin to feel something like that, and I can't, I can't think of you know, I usually go over three questions and you, I may have talked about this before, but I'm going to remind you of them again. Anytime that I feel something, especially if I, if I can't identify where it came from or why it's there is the first thing I ask is father, did I do something that the irritation that I'm feeling on the inside of me is because you are feeling this irritation because I've done something that I shouldn't have. And, and I begin to, I, I sit and I'll listen father. And, you know, as, as he begins to reveal to me, if there was something that I had done. But if I don't hear his voice and I don't hear him saying anything in return, then okay, he's saying nothing, nothing is the, there's nothing there. Then I ask him a second question, Father, am I feeling this irritation or am I sensing this irritation because it's uh, someone else? Because you are just like Charisma was talking about with quantum entanglement, because we're entangled together in him, because we are echad and one in him, that, that we will, we were, we are really getting to that place and really already are there if we stop to begin to recognize it. Let me stop and say that again. We are already there if we stop to recognize the place where sometimes when we feel these things, it may be because of, of, of the answers to one of these three questions that I'm about ready to, to finish up with. I might question number two, is this someone else that I'm feeling this irritation for? Is this something where I need to step in and begin to intercede about a situation? And then I'll sit and listen. If I don't hear the word of the Lord say anything and bring anybody up in my spirit, man, then the third question isn't really a question. It's a statement. And the statement or the qu statement question is this, then father, are you calling me to the place of ministering to you? Are you calling me to the place where it's you and I one on one? Now, I don't necessarily say that, that Father, is it you who is feeling the irritation? But it very well could be. You know, the Father does have feelings. The Father does express his feelings. He expresses his feelings in love. He expresses his feelings in, in anger. He expresses his feelings in jealousy. The, so the Father has expression and the expression of, of, of who he is. And, and so there may be times when there's an irritation that's going on in the father, but I don't want to ascribe him of a feeling in that sense. I don't want to reduce him to that feeling, but in the same breath, what if he's calling me to that place of just spending time with him? You see, Zadok, his focus was to minister to the Lord to look to the face of the Father and speak what he is saying, not just only to speak what the words that he is speaking to the people. No, it goes to what I was saying in the very beginning today. It goes to this place of, first, Father, I want to minister to you. Does that make sense? I want to spend this time with you. I need this to begin to settle the things inside of my spirit. And so I've, I've been in that place over the last few days where, where I've, I've felt this growing irritation. And the only answer that I can get is the father is calling and crying out and saying, I want to spend time with you. I want you to spend time with me. I want you to make the choice to spend time with me. And so as I began to read Psalms chapter 50, 
it began to make a lot more sense to me. It began to see, allow me to see another side of this. So let me read it first in the Tahalim. And then I'm going to actually read it in the in the Passion Translation, at least the first seven verses. And we're going to take a we're going to take a quick comparison between the two, and then move on through the rest of the chapter. But in the Tehillim, Psalm chapter 50 starts off saying this: "A song by Asaph, O Almighty God, Hashem spoke and called to the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, consummation of beauty." God appeared. All right. I know this sounds a little broken, but this is when, when the Tehillim, especially this particular version, it's taking the Hebrew and, and giving the literal translation right below it. So it's read right to left, including in the English. And, and so it's taking the literal translation of each one of those words. So let me read that again, just so that there's a little bit more of a flow with this. Oh, almighty Yahweh, Almighty Elohim, Almighty God, Hashem spoke and called to the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, out of Zion. Why do you think I opened up with this place of, of talking about the rock and, and, and the, the, the being a part of Zion and being part of that mountain? Out of Zion, consummation of beauty. God appeared. Elohim appeared. Come, will our God, and not be silent. A fire before him will consume, and his surroundings are exceedingly turbulent. He will call to the heavens above and to the earth to avenge his people. Gather unto me, my devout ones, sealers of my covenant, through a sacrifice. Then proclaim the heavens his righteousness, for God is the judge, Sila. Now, I wanted to read it in the Passion Translation as well. Let me go ahead and change over to this, because I wanted you to see it in both, uh, in both of these perspectives, because I love the way that, uh, that this was written in the Passion Translation as well. A poetic song of Asaph, the gatherer. The God of gods, the mighty Lord himself has spoken. He shouts over all the people of the earth in every brilliant sunrise and every beautiful sunset saying, listen to me. God's glory light shines out of the Zion realm with the radiance of perfect beauty. With the rumble of thunder, he approaches. He will not be silent for he comes with an ear splitting sound. Now, remember last week, we began to talk about that place of resonation, where, where when the Lord speaks and we return that word back to him, that, that as we are matching his frequency and matching his word, there is instant amplification. And we talked a little bit about how Nikola Tesla had discovered this device that began to, uh, to, 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 to tune into the resonant frequency of, of a particular, uh, well, the wood that it was attached to. And as a result, the, the building that it was in began to shake because it was, it was, there was this instant amplification that began to occur and it began to grow. Well, the same is true in this, because as we return the, the word of Yahweh back to him, then that sound gets even greater still. Now, it's funny because when we hear the word of the Lord, some say it thundered and some heard the word of the Lord. And sometimes that thunderous sound can be an ear-splitting sound that we can't even handle. But yet, what if, not what if, but as we return that word back to him, how much more will it shake? You see, there's, there's, there's a connection. There's, there's, there's two parts here, and the two shall become one flesh. There's the, the two coming together in this. All around him are furious flames of fire, and preceding him is the dazzling blaze of his glory. Here he comes to judge his people. He summons his court with heaven and earth as his jury saying, gather my devoted, devoted lovers, my godly ones whose hearts are one with me. Those who've, who have entered into my holy covenant by sacrifices upon the altar and the heavens declare his judgment, God himself will be their judge, and he will be, he will judge them with righteousness. 
Selah, or pause in his presence. Now, I love this because it begins to talk about the place of, of the Lord showing up on his mountain, the Lord expressing himself and, and, and showing himself in the, in, the, in the ultimate beauty of his glory. And every time I read this, I can't help but think about the, the glory of the Lord and, and the expression of the glory of the Lord. But I know one of the things that I've battled in my own life for many, many years has been, been this, this idea that, that there's separation, if you will, between myself and God. When John 17 itself is very specific, in, in, in speaking about what the, the as, as Apostle Aaron says, uh, the real true uh, Lord's Prayer is John 17. Yeah, I know we've always heard the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And that is, that is a, a, a definitely a Lord's Prayer. I don't want to diminish the power behind that prayer. But the true heart and intention of not only the Father, but Yeshua himself, really, to me, was expressed in John 17. Father, that they may be one, just as you and I are one, them in us and us in them. And so what he's saying is that, that what you may see from the place of where you are right now may seem like separation, but it's not. You know, I've, I've, I've asked this question before, and it's, it's messed with a lot of people. It's messed with me for sure when, when I've said it. And that is that, that, remember, there's a God-shaped hole inside of us that only God can fill. And I used to hear that as a kid growing up all the time. And now one day, not, you know, several years ago, I asked the Lord this and said, Father, if I believe that as above, so below, that what I see and what you're showing me in myself and, and the way that this world works and the way that the, there's connection in this world, and I can see your beauty and your glory throughout creation itself, how much more so with, with you? And so if there's a God-shaped hole inside of me that only you can fill, Father, is there a man-shaped hole inside of you that only I can fill, only we can fill? And it it really began to help me to understand the depth of John 17 and the depth of what, what really the beginning of Psalms chapter 50 is really crying and declaring out. Because I realized, wait a minute, Father, and this both excited me and scared me at the same time. I began to realize, Father, if that's true, then you need me just as much as I need you. And if that's the case, then how important is the place and the position and the job and the, and the, and the connection and our relation? You know, it's not, I, I, hate, I hate when I do that. How important is our relationship? I don't ever want to begin with the idea that it's all about what we do. Father, forgive me. Holy Spirit, thank you for prodding me in that. The number one place that I want to, to, be, to be able to express is that, Father, I want to have this relationship with you. That is the first and most important thing in my life. Then what I do from that is because of my expression of love back to you, the love that you've already given me, and the expression of that love back to you. So let me repeat that one more time, except say it in the right way. Father, how much then do you need me to love you just as much as you love me? And it began to convict me because I began to realize some of the, the places where, where I had counted some of the very little things, or hmm, were they little? It's funny with God, you know, the little things can hide really big things. The living letter Yod is the smallest of all of the living letters, and yet it contained everything that creation was formed by inside of that one little tiny yod. So come on now, let's hold on. Let's, let's, let's stop and think about it just a minute, right? How many times have I counted things that you have said as little or nothing and didn't, and, and didn't realize how valuable they were? Thank you, Father. 
You see, so in this place where I began to, to sense this, then I realized that, that Father, I, I, my heart is to express your glory. My heart is to be one with you and be a conduit of your glory. Be a conduit of, of, who, I, of who you are in me into this earth. You see, even from a Hebraic perspective, the living letter Vav was, was formed because he, Yahweh took a yod, a, 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 a photon of light from his heart, and he placed it into the center of creation, thereby creating that Vav. And that Vav, which means, it's, which it means the uh, heaven and earth connection, it also is the letter of man. Vav is the sixth letter of the Hebrew Aleph Beit. And, and, it, and, and really, when I see it from that perspective, I see it as the conduit of his light into creation. And that's what he's telling us by that letter. He's telling us, you are the conduit of my light into this earth. You are the one that connects. Do you see the picture of what I'm saying here? And in that place where we are that connection, we are that, that, that light, then I want to reveal that light. I don't want to cover up my end, that part where my feet are on the earth. I don't want to put a bushel over top of me and hide the light of Yahweh. As a matter of fact, I want to rent the veil of my flesh and allow the, the pure light of Yahweh to, to, be, to be resonating through me, to be, to be shining through me and you in that place, you see? So why, why have I... Why have I come with this? Because it, it, when we look at Psalms chapter 50, out of this place, there's a beautiful, deep story that to me that the Father begins to, to speak about. And as I, was, as I was meditating over this, I began to think about the Shekinah glory of Yahweh. In Hebrew, and the proper pronunciation of he in Hebrew is Shekinah. But the, in, 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 the, in the West, we call it the Shekinah glory of God. And I remember years ago, we used to sing that song about, you know, Shekinah glory come down. You remember? And uh, uh, at least that was the, the, it was an awesome song that we used to sing. But the truth is, is that, that the Shekinah glory of God isn't something that comes down. The Shekinah is really the expression of the beauty of the bride of Christ. If you will, it's the expression of the beauty in us. His Shekinah is that glory that is revealed through us. Remember, we're a conduit of his light into this earth. And the expression of that light into the earth is the Shekinah glory of Yahweh. Now, I know that may rattle you a little bit, but it's the truth. Now, now think about this. And in that case, when I begin to see that, that I am a part of the conduit, you see, it's his glory that is shining. It's not my glory, it's his. But it is shining out through me. Why? Because I've made a choice to open up a door, to rent the veil of my flesh, to allow his light to come out. But then that makes me stop to think about the responsibility that I have. You see, when we begin to go into Psalms chapter 50, with the thunder, with the rumble of thunder, he approaches. He will not be silent, for he comes with an ear splitting sound. This is in the Passion Translation. All around him are furious flames of fire, and preceding him is the dazzling blaze of, a, of his glory. Here, come, here he comes to judge his people. He summons his court with heaven and earth, and as Assyria's saying, Gather my devoted lovers. And it goes on to say, From there. So you see, there's a place where he's expressing that glory. And as Father began to, to show me about this, I began to go to a scripture that I had heard back when I was, uh, uh, well, back years ago, and it's not one that I've really thought of until recently. And then the Father has, has brought it back up, and that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 32. And you'll recognize it because it's, it's one that, that is spoken of a lot, especially as there's a time of communion. And it starts with this in verse 23, for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Yeshua, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had uh, supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself first. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now, if you stop to think about this, remember that part when I was talking about just a moment ago, we're counting things as little or nothing. And that's what he's alluding to here. We're counting the, the blood and the body of Christ as little or nothing. And there needs to be, there, there has to be a careful examination. It's what I was talking about with this. There's a careful examination when I realize that I'm the conduit of the Shekinah, Shekinah glory of God then there is, there is a responsibility that I have in that place as well. And this is where it's talking about it. For this cause, I'll read verse 29 again. For he that eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. But listen to verse 31. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. That verse 31 has always messed with me because in this place where I begin to honor and see the beauty and the 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 fullness of the love and the expression of my father to give his only son, to die on the cross for my sins, to die in the place where, where I should have been judged. And, but because he chose to be the sacrifice and he chose to take every sin upon himself, that now I do not have to be judged and be and die the, the, the death that, that, I, that I should be, that I should have to die in because he took it upon, his, 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 upon himself through his blood and through his sacrifice. How could I ever count that as little or nothing when it cost even my father his everything? When it comes to Yeshua, it cost him everything. And you see, so in that place, my place and my way of honoring that is, Father, I see in myself those things that need to be changed, and I will judge myself. Therefore, once I have judged myself, and I have judged in the place where I do honor your blood and your body and the sacrifice that you made for me, and, and, I, and I operate from that place of not only be, being covered by your righteousness, but Father, I hear the call that you have called out to us, and that is, be ye holy as I am holy. So Father, I strive into that place of, of the holiness. I strive to, to stand in that place of, of rightness and, and, and holiness in you. You know, David said, search my heart and see if there be any wicked thing in me. Try me. Allow me to see these things so that I can, I can begin to change those things inside of my heart. I can, I can walk past those things that are now, that have been, that have been holding me down for all these years so that I can do what, so that I can begin to be who you've always meant to be, meant me to be, which is your son. That's the most important of all. I want to be your son. I want the, the relationship that we have is the most important. You see, that began to mess with me when I began to see this in this perspective, because he's saying, judge yourself and you will not be judged. So then when I, when I went back to Psalms chapter 50 and started looking at the first seven verses again, I was like, wait a minute, I'm seeing something a little bit different here. I'm seeing something a little bit different. So 
from this place, from this place where we have chosen to say, Father, I want to be like you. My relationship with you is the most important. Let's go over Psalms chapter 50, one through seven again. All right. The God of gods, the Lord Almighty himself has spoken. He shouts, he speaks over all the people of the, uh, of the earth. And the way that he does it is in every brilliant, brilliant sunrise and every beautiful sunset. Every time we look up into the sky and see the sunrise or see the sunset, we see the expression of the glory of the Lord saying, hey, I am here. I don't care whether you're feeling weird today or not. I don't care if, you're, if you've got this, this place of irritation that's bothering you or not. It doesn't matter whether or not there's things... I am showing you my glory and my glory is here. Pay attention to it. Listen to, listen to my glory. It's not only in you, it's all around you. Every tree, every flower, every sunrise, every sunset is expressing my glory. God's glory light shines out of the Zion realm. Now, I can't help when, when I see that, especially he, the Lord, the Lord's, the Lord, the light shining out of Zion. It's talking about the light shining out of us. You know, it's funny because when I break down the word Zion through the eyes of the living letters, uh, there are four living letters that, that actually make up the, the word Zion. And it's Zadi, Yod, Vav, Nun, Final. Zadi. Zadi is the letter that speaks of righteousness. It's the right standing. It's through, it's that through which we, we receive over with the blood of Yeshua. But it's also an expression of the of a, of a living letter. And so once we are covered in the blood of Yeshua, we stand as Zadik. We stand as righteous ones. When we come together and we have this time where we're when we're when we're ministering and when we're we're speaking together, we're ministering to one another, then we become the Zadikim. The multiplicity of the, Z Z the Zedeks, if you will, the Zadiks. Now, come on. Zadik is the root for Zadok. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the term Zadok. And many of you guys have heard of Zadok. If you haven't, then, then reach out to me and I'll, begin, uh, I'll be glad to share with you who Zadok is. I don't want to have the time today. But, but let me say this, that uh, uh, Melchizedek, Melech Zadok, is an expression of that as well. And so out of that Zion realm, Zadi, out of the, the righteousness of God comes together from the little tiny dot, that little tiny yod, the, the place of the all spark of creation, the light of Yahweh being carried to or through or being connected to yod, the light of Yahweh, vav, the conduit of that light to the nun, the, the, the sons, the kings, the heirs, and the priests in the kingdom. That's what that's saying. You see, I love the nun final speci specifically, um, because nun so feet or nun final to me, there's only one definition the Father's ever given me of that letter. And that is, till we all come to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. And so he's saying, out of Zion, out of the place of my righteousness, I give you the allspark. I give you my light. And through you, I will, I, will, I will allow my light to come through you so that you stand as a standard in the earth of the fullness of the measure of the stature of my son, Yeshua. Do you see that? You see, the way that I used to see Nun no, no, Final is as a measuring rod. And the only measuring rod that I will ever measure myself against is the fullness of the measure of the stature of Yeshua the Christ, Yeshua the Son of Almighty Yahweh. That's the only measure because it's in him that he looks at me by his blood and says, I see a son. The father says, I see a son. I see a son who's standing in my, my son, Yeshua. And as one of his brothers, as, as being family, as being connected together and all that. You get, one, you get the picture of what, I'm, what, I, what, what the what Holy Spirit is trying to paint here? Okay, good. Let me move on. God's glory light, light shines out of the Zion realm. Zion itself is expressing how we are, we're shining his light. With the radiance of perfect beauty, if you will, the Shekinah, the Shekinah glory. With the rumble of thunder, he approaches. 
with the sound of his words, he begin, he be approaches and his words begin to rumble. Now, remember, as sons, my, my one thing that I want to do is to return that word back to him, complete, full, lacking nothing, just as the scripture says. My word goes forth in, in the, all, or all the earth, and it does not return back void. Why? Because I have returned that word back to him and allowed it to be completed, become tangible evidence in the earth. With the rumble of thunder, he approaches. He will not be silent because he comes with an ear, ear splitting sound. How much more so as we are joining together with him in that sound? All around him are furious flames of fire. Now, I've asked this question before, and I want to bring it back up again, because when I look at the living letter Shin, the living letter Shin represents that place of fire, but, and it also represents tooth. And I remember when Yahweh first started to show me about that, I asked the question, okay, fire, tooth, how do the two of these have anything in common? at all whatsoever. It doesn't make any sense until I realized that both fire and teeth consume. And the reason they consume is to do something. When fire consumes wood, it can be used to to be able to, to stir up electricity or to bring about electricity because I could put a boiling pot of water underneath of it and allow a steam turbine to be able to generate electricity from the steam rising out from it. Well, the same thing's true with teeth. My teeth will eat food and it crunches it up and makes it smaller so that my body can have the ability to be able to digest it. If you will, it comes to the shin of my belly, if you will, and allows the fires of the inside of me to be able to burn up that food and and be able to bring it out into the rest of my body so that my cells and my muscles and my brain have the ability to be able to continue. So when I look at both of these, especially as as they look at this place of consuming, The consuming of this has to do with action. It's causing something to be done. In other words, it gives me the energy to keep going. It gives me the energy to, or the uh, the external energy in the sense of fire and electricity to be able to get things done, right? Well, when I look at Yeshua, in Hebrew, it's properly spelled Yod Shin Vavayim. So the Yeshua himself has the living letter Shin in that. And to me, way, the way I look at the living letter Shin is as an action word or an action letter. It's, it's, it's the place of, if you will, getting something done. And, and, the, and the, the name Yeshua means Yah is my salvation. Yah is salvation. And so it's the, it's the, the act and the process of the salvation And so Yeshua himself became the expression of the fire in the earth to remind us, to remind us because Yahweh never rescinded this from the very beginning. We've always been an expression of his fire, but we forgot. Religion began to veil things off and began to block things off so that we forgot who and what we were. But Yeshua came back to say, hey, these things have always been true. Let me show you the heart of the Father and what he's been saying in this. And so he showed the fire and revealed, and he started a fire here in the earth. Right? All around him are furious flames of fire. I began to realize that that, that this sentence right here, isn't saying that the father is, is a fire. Now he is, we know in other parts of scripture where it says that he is, he is his, 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 every part about him is like a blazing fire. But in this scripture, he's talking about us all around him are furious flames of fire because it's the expression of his Shekinah glory here, Shekinah glory here in the earth. And the, the, the path that he's coming in is that the, the fire is, is preceding him. All right? You, you seeing this? Holy Spirit, help me to, to express this the way that, that you showed it to me, uh, to, you know, over the last few days. And today, especially, as I've been digging into this, Father, I thank you that, that you are showing us that we are your glory. We are the expression of your fire here in the earth. 
and preceding him is the dazzling blaze of his glory. You see, that's talking about us. We are the dazzling blaze of his glory that's surrounding him in this, in this particular chapter. That messes with me, y'all. The dazzling blaze of his glory. The dazzling blaze of his glory. The dazzling blaze of his glory. Do you see? Do you see the dazzling blaze? Do you see yourself as the dazzling blaze of his glory? You see, I've, I've many times wondered in Revelation where it talks about how that the earth will be, will be renovated by fire. And I've asked this question before. Now, here's a, here's, here's a chapter and verse, if you want to go to, that connects the Revelation verse that I'm talking about. Right here where it's talking about this. Because I've often asked the question, who says that it's the fire that we always thought it was? Who says that we are not that fire? We are not the ones who are preceding him as the dazzling blaze of his glory. And the earth is renovated. The earth is changed. Why? Because the sons have taken their place. They realize the importance of the relationship that they have with the Father, and they stand as a standard in the earth. They stand in this place where we are, if you will, the standard of judgment in the earth. If I judge myself, then I should not be judged, right? Because I have judged myself, I have judged those things in me that, 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 have, that, that do not belong there and that are separating me from the Father. And I've gotten rid of those weights that so easily beset me. And I stand before the Lord in the fullness of, 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 of every bit of anything that I can do. You know, because the, the, the truth is, is that, it, you know, I, when I say that, there's, there's a part of me that says, oh, but, you know, that, that, that how can you say that? I mean, come on, you make mistakes all the time. You do this all the time. You, you're not perfect. Come on, you're irritated over the last couple of days. So how can you say that you're irritated and be the, the dazzling blaze of the glory of the Lord? You know what? I don't, shut up voices. Shut up. It doesn't, those part, those things don't matter. The most important thing to me is my father. And he's calling me to, to this place of, of being in communion with him. He's calling me to this place where he's wanting me to minister to him as he ministers to me. That's the most important thing. And so I'm going to judge myself and say, no, 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 I want to let those things go. I'm not going to hold on to them because I want to, my, the intent of my heart is to be so much like him that when somebody looks at me, they don't even see me. They see him. They see him. Here he comes to judge his people. He summons his court with heaven and earth as his jury saying, gather all my devoted Lovers, my godly ones whose hearts are one with me. Those who have entered into my holy co covenant by sacrifices upon the altar and the heavens declare his judge justice. God himself will be their judge and he will judge them with righteousness. Now, I want to read this in the Tehillim as well, because it says something a little bit different in the Tehillim that I want to bring out. He will call to the heavens above and to the earth to avenge his people. Now, in the Passion Translation, it said judge his people. But in this case, he's saying to avenge his people. You see, when I see that word, that word there for judgment, not only means judgment in the sense that we're used to, but it also means that of avenging as well. And, and so look at what verse 5 says, gather my devout ones unto me sealers of my covenant through sacrifice. You have sealed my covenant through sacrifice. Then the heavens proclaimed his righteousness, for God is the judge.
Pura Vakatar Rama. Gather my devout ones unto me, sealers of my covenant. Father, I thank you that in the place where I have recognized the covenant that you made with me, the promise that you gave when you sent your son Yeshua into the earth to die for me, that Father, in this place where I begin to emulate Yeshua and the light that he was in the earth because he was a conduit of your light into this earth. And as I begin to emulate from that place, that Father, I am sealing that covenant. I am doing the things that you've asked me to do. I'm spending that time with you because really the reason I'm doing the things that I do for you is because we have that relationship, because it's the most important part to me. I'm going to read the rest of this here in just a moment, but as I was studying this, there was one more word that came up, uh, particularly this part where it says, he will call to the heavens above the earth to avenge his people. That Hebrew word there is the Hebrew word ladin. Uh, now, ladin is, is actually a, the lamed in front of that is a, 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 a prefix, all right? Because in that case, it's two or four. And uh, so ladin would say two or four judgment, okay? Because the actual Hebrew word for judgment is deed, deen. Uh, Dalit, Yod, Nun, Final. Uh, so Dean, as in the name, Dean, if, you've, if you know somebody by the name of Dean, it's pronounced the same way. And now it's funny because I can, I can look at that prefix of that Lamed and say, oh, that just means two or four. And then I could spend some time digging into the word judgment. But am I counting that Lamed as little or nothing by saying that in this case, all it means is little or four. You see, when I look at Dean and the word judgment, it's the door, the Dalit. Now the father, Yeshua himself said, I am the door, right? I am the door. And, and as we go in through him, into the father through him, we too become doors. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. We are a part of those. We become a door into, into this place. Well, the door of what? The door of the all spark of Yahweh, the door of the treasure of Yahweh, the low, yo, that little tiny dot that seems like it's little or nothing, but it contains the fullness of the treasuries of heaven inside of it. To who? His sons. His sons who stand in the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. Now, do you see how when you look at the uh, Hebrew word, through the eyes of the living letters, how it begins to, to, to express a whole nother level and a whole nother layer here. It's not just judging like you're right, you're wrong, boom, that's it. No, it's saying, wait, judgment is a place of the door and me becoming a door. So I have a place where I can judge myself, judge myself about the little things, judge the little things in me and, and get rid of those little things that, that, that are weighing me down but yet, and, but at accepting and, and allowing the revealing light of Yahweh, which is also that little yod, to come through me into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. Well, that lamed in the beginning, I haven't forgotten it. I can count it as a, a word that means two or four, but lamed itself really is the letter that begins to express that relationship. So that word there, ladin, really is saying this to me, because in the Lamed, in the place of me sitting in the Lamed, Lamed means learning and teaching. But to me, the father took me one step further and said, but the Lamed also expresses the place of his heart. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells in the heart of Almighty Yahweh dwells in the, is in the shadow of the Almighty. So I began to see this, this letter that in this case means two or four and say the, the most important thing is here, the relationship, that time that I spend with him. And it is through that and through the loving instruction of my father that he begins to teach me so that I may judge myself because of the light that he has shown inside of me. I don't have to worry about his judgment 
in that case, I can judge myself because his light has convicted me and brought about that place where he says, judge yourself and you should not be judged. Does that make sense? Because it's exactly what the, the blood and the body of Yeshua did on the cross. He took care of that sacrifice once and for all. But this is an expression of my responsibility in this. I know today was a, a bit deep, and I do want to finish up the rest of, of Psalms chapter 50, because the rest of Psalms chapter 50 kind of goes over the Lord's expression to both the, the righteous sons and the wicked. So verse 8 says this, I shall not rebuke you for your sacrifices. I'm not going to rebuke you for that. Tell you what, let me read this in the, in the Passion Translation, because um, it's... Uh, it's a little bit more understandable than, than through the Tahalim, at least in this case. Verse 8 says, I do not rebuke you for your sacrifice, which you continually bring to my altar. Do I need your young bulls or goats from your fields as if I were hungry? Every animal of field and forest belongs to me, the creator. I know every moment of the birds in the skies. And every animal of the field is in my thoughts. The entire world and everything it contains is mine. If, if I were hungry, do you think I would tell you? For all that I have created, the fullness of the earth is mine. Am I fed by your sacrifices? Of course not. Why don't you bring me the sacrifices I desire? Bring me your true and sincere thanks. Bring me that place of the fullness of the intent of your heart and show your gratitude by keeping your promises to me, the most high, the covenants that you have made with me, that place where you see who you are and, and, you, and you follow through because the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord, but it requires my, my, my choice to make the next footstep. Honor me by trusting me in your, in you, trusting me in your day of trouble. Cry aloud to me and I will be there to rescue you. And now I speak to the wicked. Listen to what I have to say to you. What right do you have to presume to speak for me and claim my covenant promises as yours? For you have hated my instruction. You've not gone to the place of my heart. And you didn't want to learn or teach. Remember Ladin. Uh, you've, you've, dis you've hated my instruction and disregarded my words, throwing them away as worthless. You see how I brought that from the Yod? Now he's talking about the Yod and now the wicked see that little thing as little or nothing and they cast it aside. You forget to, the, you forget to condemn the thief or adulterer. You are their friend running alongside them into darkness. The sins of your mouth multiply evil. You have a lifestyle of lies. You are devoted to deceit as you speak against others, even slandering those of your own household. All this you have done, and I kept silent. So you thought I was just like you, sanctioning evil. But now I will bring you to my courtroom and spell out clearly my charges before you. This is your last chance. My final warning, your time is up. Turn away from all this evil, or the next time you hear from me, will be when I am coming to pass judgment upon you. I will snatch you away and no one will be there to help you escape my judgment. The life that pleases me is the, li the life lived in the gratitude of grace, always choosing to walk with me in what is right. This is the sacrifice that I desire from you. If you do this, more of my, more, more of my salvation will unfold for you. Now, remember that last part there, he was speaking to the wicked. And remember that the, 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 one of the things that we learned in the beginning of these Psalms, as we were going through the first six or seven chapters, was the difference between sin and wickedness. Wickedness is a choice that we make to purposefully turn away and not do the word of Yahweh. Wickedness is not something we just become. It is a choice. Now, it may be a gradual choice. As we begin to count things as little or nothing, but it's still a choice. And if it's a simple choice, then it's a simple choice going back to the way that we know is supposed to be right. Sin is missing the mark. 
Sin is that place where we 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 try where we're, we're at least the intent of our heart is trying to do something, but we may fall short of that. And and, and according to Psalms, that is the definition of sin. So bear that in mind. We we make mistakes sometimes, but that's what we're doing. Our intent is living in the heart of the Lord. That's what Ladin is all about. It's living in the heart of the Lord, being a door, and then counting those little things as being great of, of great value. You know, it, it, it just, it reminds me of, of the little things where I've, I've done this in the past before myself, and I've counted things as little or nothing. Even recently, the, 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 the Holy Spirit convicted me because I was like, oh, that's, and, and my, my wife reminded me of it. And I was like, ooh, you know, you're right. I counted it as little or nothing, and I shouldn't have. So, Father, I want to thank you that in the place that you've given us, Father, that you've given us this place of, of allowing us to be the conduit of your glory. Father, we are the expression of your Shekinah glory of Yahweh here in this earth. We thank you, Father, that, that we are your candle. We are your light. We are the blaze of your glory that proceeds before you. We have chosen to come to the mountain and we enwrap ourselves around the mountain to become on fire just as the mountain is on fire. Just, Father, as you are described with flames of fire coming out of your eyes and that you're, you're a blaze of glory yourself, that, Father, that we are expression of that blaze of glory as we surround you. And we're connected to you. And Father, we thank you that in this place, it's through this light and through this where, where everything else is judged. Because once light appears, darkness must flee. And in that right there, judgment has already occurred. Stop to think about it. In the place where light appears, judgment has already occurred. Why? Because darkness has to flee. It cannot be there at all whatsoever. So, Father, we, we take the responsibility and the realization that, Father, we don't want to count anything, anything that's going on in us, around us, or through us, that, Father, that e each and everything that, that goes on, Father, that all things work together to the good to them who love you. And we want to, to honor and appreciate even those little tiny things that to us seem little or nothing. We want to see them of great value. So that in that place, Father, that we can look inside of ourselves and say, Father, I want to change to be like you. Thank you for revealing this nugget. Thank you for revealing this, this, this place, this, this light inside of me. So that the veil that I have put up that allows me, that doesn't allow me to see through to the fullness of your light, I can tear down that veil now. That veil can be ripped and, rent and taken away because I was the one that put up that veil in the first place. I can remove that veil and allow your light to come out of that area in my life. Father, that I may be the fullness of the expression of your glory. And I thank you that, Father, you're teaching me that place. I submit to you and I humble myself inside of you and say, Father, that is my heart. That is the intent of my heart. With every single breath and with everything, uh, every time that I spend time with you and everything that I do because of my love for you, I will remind myself of the importance of that little tiny dot and the blood and the body of Yeshua that died on the cross for me so that I can begin to see and become the expression of your glory in the earth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Blessings and shalom to all those who are, who are, are here on, on the recording who have listened through this. My heart and is, is to, as you can tell, my heart is in this place of, of expressing and, and encouraging the body of Christ to the place of saying, wait a minute, I know who I am, and I know who I am through you. And Father, I want to become the, the very expression of your glory in the earth. So allow this word to begin to permeate every every heart. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are the great teacher. 
that you are the one that will begin to allow pictures, allow for, allow for someone to be able to see something in their own life and how they can, they can connect the words of what we've talked about today in their life. And that that, that, that that revelation will begin to unfold before them, just like you said. If you do this, more of my, more of my salvation will unfold for you. That your, salva that your salvation will continue to unfold for each and every one that is here. Blessings and shalom.